The doll in this video is not a toy. It is a fragile and or expensive art piece or collectible intended for adult collectors. Hello everyone, this is Rachel or Clanville Tan and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to give a review of this PID Eiffel House doll pixie. <laughs> I want to cover two things in this video. I want to review her and her posing, and I also want to show you guys a quick comparison of her next to some dolls that you might be more familiar with, a Made to Move Barbie, a Raised Vet Dolls 112 scale doll, and a Mayu special 28 centimeter body, just so you guys have a frame of reference for what size she is and how her proportions compare. So first off, I'd like to show you guys the posing. Her neck mobility is really, really great. She can look down, she can look up, and she can do those things in almost any version of the direction. There is a little bit of limitation just to the side of the front in going down on either side. So like essentially if her chin was lined up right over her breast, that area she can't look down very far, but the other directions she can do better. The looking up is especially good, which considering she's like a pixie sculpt, posing her with dolls that are bigger than her, that's a really important feature to be able to have. So I'm really happy she can do that. The resin feels really nice. There are some seam lines, which I think this is my first time seeing seam lines in person, unless there were some on the doll she doll I handled. You can see along here, hopefully you guys can see it, hopefully the camera is picking it up, and also on her legs. It's not very disruptive in person. You don't notice it a lot, but they are there. Her sculpting is very beautiful. It looks very realistic, except for, of course, her head, which is oversized on purpose. She has very subtle little ribs on either side which could be enhanced quite easily with a bit of body blushing. She's got a delicate little collarbones, a little belly, there's another seam line on the side, and her arms and legs have really nice shape too. She has a really interesting hip joint. There's this little hook and this is on a separate piece of resin from the leg. And if you guys can see all of those little holes there and what happens when the leg is in the socket is this little peg can go into the holes and that helps her hold poses. It doesn't always work exactly how I think it was intended to work, but it does mean she is a very like stable sitter. You can see how far she's able to lean forward while still holding position. And it also means that if you have her standing on a solid surface, she can actually balance even with this really big head, which is quite impressive. My preference would be to have a rotational joint there instead, but if you're priority is on them doll being able to stand and sit very securely then you might prefer a joint like this now the jointing is probably my least favorite thing about this doll unfortunately other than the head joint when i look at them i'm expecting a certain level of mobility from them compared to the other dolls i've handled i just feel like they don't deliver and maybe i'm being super picky but this is a review so i am going to be a little bit critical just like i'm going to tell you guys things that i like about this sculpt the shoulder joints are unremarkable they're not dysfunctional they're not a standout they do the job the the elbow joint here, it doesn't want to lock into place on its own and it's very difficult to get both sides of the peanut joint engaged at the same time, at least in my experience. I do think some wiring would help, but up here, if you see the scallop in her arm is kind of deep, so that allows it to go up, but the scallop on the lower end is very shallow, so it doesn't really allow for a lot of mobility there, even when you can achieve a really close bent it then doesn't stay I wondered if I had it in the wrong position so I turned it around but it obviously didn't quite fit right and wasn't intended to be that way it's possible that there are some tricks of how to get the elbows to behave that I just don't know about but right out of the box it's not doing what I expected to do if I can show you guys on this Mayu special body for example and this one I have not altered in any way this is how she came right out of the box as far as 
the body is. You can see that this peanut joint, it engages and you can get this level of posability with almost no effort. And with her, when you try to bend her, both sides don't really click. And even if you manually get them to click, still that's as far as it'll naturally go. So it's essentially the amount of mobility you would get out of a single jointed doll. Just in case you think it's just because of her small size, here's a raised vet doll. You can see what happens when I bend it up. It gets almost exactly the same mobility as the one twice her size. And this is one artist working by herself in her house. And I imagine Eiple House as a company would have a team. So I'm not quite sure why they didn't work on this elbow joint more or just make it single jointed and save some costs. The wrists, there's something about them that I do not like, but it is a personal preference thing. So so it depends on what you're looking for. I really like the wrists being able to be posable. Most ball jointed dolls that I've come across are like this. The S hook goes directly into the hand. There's like a little bar in there usually and that supports the hand. This one is the same way as you can see. And in this one, the S hook is like embedded in the hand and that doesn't seem like a big difference, but you can see the range of mobility I'm able to get with this wrist. And you you can't do any bending back and forth at all with this. You can kind of try to like lock it out of sync with the arm, but that wouldn't look good unless she was wearing sleeves that like went over her hands partially. So it really hampers her movement. She does have rotation, but that is it. And I think that's really sad because it limits the amount of expression that you can have in her posing. There is no tummy joint. Most BJDs don't have them, I think. The shoulder joint forward, it's really great. And you have a couple of shelves in here so you can set it at different settings which is awesome doesn't really go backward in my experience like as soon as I let go it just bounces back so you can't really have poses with her lounging she just kind of lays there they had a joint there that it would have been nice if it had been able to go both directions the knee joint essentially has the same thing going on as the elbow it's just not engineered in a way that allows it to move like a double joint if you get it in the exact right position you can achieve this which is good but it's a little hard to get into that position but I would consider these knees to be functioning double jointed knees just a little problematic whereas the arms are for me nearly impossible the ankles have the same issue that the wrists do where the S hook is embedded in there and it can't turn which makes walking poses kind of awkward because her foot is always in a 90 degree angle with her leg which doesn't look natural in a lot of poses so just the overview, I like the neck joint and the knees and the hips with reservations. I am unsatisfied with the elbows, the wrists, and the ankles, as well as the torso joint to a lesser extent. Overall, if I was going to give her a number of stars out of 10, I would probably give her a 6 or a 7. She's really cute and adorable, and I'm really happy I had the chance to get a look at her, but her posing is just a little bit too problematic for me. It's hard to get her to cooperate, and she's simply incapable of a lot of the poses that I expect out of a ball jointed doll. So I do plan on selling her because I think she deserves to have a home where she will be fully appreciated. Appreciated, and that's not going to happen at my house because of my personal preferences. Before I go, I want to show you guys her sizing compared to some other dolls. So this is the Mayu Special Body 28 centimeter. This is a Barbie, which is almost exactly the same size as the Mayu Special Body. And then here is a Raised Vet doll. You can see that she's almost halfway in between 1 12th and 1 6th. So I hope this was helpful and I don't want to give you guys the impression that like she's a bad sculptor or anything like that. I feel really privileged to have had the chance to get a look at her. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I typically make videos about ball jointed dolls, art dolls, and miniatures, as well as occasional videos about fashion dolls and vintage dolls. So if any of those things are up your alley, be sure to try out some of my other videos and subscribe. If you are familiar with my content, I have a Facebook group linked below. Anyone 13 years of age or older is welcome to join there. And I just post there whenever I have a video up on YouTube, whenever I put one up. That allows you guys to be able to give me feedback on the videos that I have to mark for legal reasons as made for kids. And it also helps make sure you don't miss an upload if that's something that's important to you. I also have a Patreon where you guys can support the channel for as little as $2 a month in exchange for seeing all of my videos 
one to two weeks early and every month I give away one doll to my patrons and only patrons have access to that monthly giveaway so be sure to check out my patreon for the details on that and see if it's something you want to be a part of those who support me on the fairy godparent tier in addition to what I already mentioned also get a sticker sent to them every single month of one of my dolls and a shout out in every single YouTube video I make. So shout out to Road to Eric Fan, Tenor Girl, and my anonymous fairy godparents. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.